I got this great comment on my first Records from Dan video the other day. You can kind of sense the surprise in this guy's voice. There's going to be more than one box, he writes. Yes, indeed, there is. And today I got the second box of records uh, from my friend Dan. To catch you up on the story, Dan is a friend of mine who lives in California, and he's moving soon, and so he wanted to get rid of some of his records. And he asked me if I would be interested in taking some off his hands, and of course I said yes, I would. So I wanted to share with you something that I got in this second box of records from Dan. First of all, I'm also moving, so please excuse the boxes in the background there. My guess is that when you see some of these amazing albums, you won't even be looking at the boxes in the back. First of all, I pulled out some blues stuff. On the left there is John Miles' Blues Breakers, A Hard Road. In the middle is the first album by Love Sculpture. It's called Blues Helping. And on the right is the Ainsley Dunbar Retaliation. Here's some more blue stuff, Alm's Blues Vibes on Sire Records, and on the right is Strange Affair by Help Yourself. Here's some good psychedelic stuff, on the left is Chameleon Church, in the middle is Chrysalis, and on the right is Thoringsfield. Chameleon Church, you might know, featured Chevy Chase, the comedian, on drums, and Dan even included the original receipt that he got when he bought that album. More psych stuff on the right is Cosmic Sounds by the Zodiac, uh, featuring Mort Garson, who plays the synthesizer. And on the left is the Electric Prune's second album. Here's Kaleidoscope Side Trips there at the top on Epic. On the right is an obscure group called Christopher's Movie Matinee. On the bottom there is Gree Gree by Dr. John the Night Tripper. And on the left is Sunday Funnies. It's her self-titled album on Rare Earth. On the left, Lee Stevens. He's from Blue Cheer, and his album is called Red Weather. And on the right is a Kim Fowley album, Good Clean Fun, on Imperial. There's a Latter-day Animals album on the left, Love Is. It's their double set from, I think, 1968. And on the right is Jeff Beck's second album, Beckola. Here's some folky things. Um, on the right is an incredible string band album, Liquid Acrobat, As Regards the Air. And on the left is Tim pa Tom Paxton, excuse me. On the left, The Pentangle, their first album on Reprise. In the middle is Lorca by Tim Buckley. And on the right is a sort of unknown album, um, Monfort Mission, Yesterday's Gone on Reprise. Here's some classic pop stuff, Buffalo Springfield's first album on Echo on the left, and the epic album Having a Rave Up with the Yardbirds on the right. Some classic surf on the right there, Pipeline by the Shantes on Dot Records. And on the left is the Bo Brummel's fourth album, Triangle. Here's some obscure women on the Electra label. Carol Hall on the left and Jeannie Green on the right. Dan and I have both always really liked stuff on Electra. We think that they put out some interesting stuff and so he included a lot of those. On the left there's the Whackers. On the right is Casey Kelly. They're both from Electra. Here's a better known Electra album, but this one is the, uh, the uncensored version that includes the MF word on Electra Records there. Cake on the left. Francois Hardy in the middle. Here's some women albums, if you want to use that term. And on the right, um, The Marble Index, the second album by Nico, which is also on Electra. Here's some obscure stuff, some people I'd never heard of, but they look interesting. Clifford T. Ward, Mantle Pieces on the left. It's on the famous Charisma label. In the middle there is a sort of strange looking album, Peter Ivers Band. The album's called Night of the Blue Communion, and it's on Epic Records. And on the right there, is Dewey Martin and Medicine Ball. Here's some more interesting albums, just one by one. Um, Street Noise by Julie Driscoll, Brian Auger, and the Trinity. The first album by Earth Opera on Electra Records. Here's the second album by Quicksilver Messenger Surface. It's called Happy Trails on Capitol. Here's a highs in the mid 60s volume. It's volume one for Ohio, my home state. Sandy Nelson beat that drum on Imperial Records. Here's the second pressing of Songs of Innocence by David Axelrod with the different cover. Um, Whistle Rhymes by John Entwistle, who of course is the bassist for The Who. Now Dan also included some cool extras this time. Um, this time he included these two audiophile magazines from the 60s. This one obviously um, shows some stuff about tape technology. And there's also a little catalog that shows different things that are available on tape at this point. Um, on the right there is Winds of Change by Eric Bird and the Animals, and you can see Butterfield Blues Band and Big Brother there. And the other one is basically just audiophile stuff, um, equipment reviews and things like that. There's also this interview with Credence, which is pretty cool. 
Now, there are also these two magazines. The one on the right, as you can see, is Rolling Stone. Like with MTV, back in the old days, Rolling Stone was actually about music. Some great ads in these magazines, like this one for John Cale's first album, Vintage Violence. Here's one for uh, the album Mongrel by the Bob Seeger system. Mongrel is a bitch. I think these ads are really cool. Um, Thunderclap Newman, Hollywood Dream. There's another ad there. It's a band famous for something in the air. Um, an entire full page ad for Pearls Before Swine, um, advertising a couple of their albums on reprise. Uh, in this other magazine, there's a cool article about the Hollies. And there's one too about Zeppelin, as you can see, which is pretty interesting. You know, priceless artifacts that you certainly don't find every day. So I want to thank you again, Dan, for a great box of records. I had such a great time looking through these, and I know you'll have good karma because of this. Thank you. Bye.